Hey, stick around to the end to see how I've harmonised this eight bars from Scrapple from the Apple. First, a few general considerations. You may have seen my previous videos about harmonising like Gil Evans, where I almost always had a new chord for every melody note. I intend to have a new chord for each note in this example, but most of them won't be functional. As the tempo goes up, the amount of functional chords tends to go down, otherwise it's hard to make it all work. A note about the orchestration. In this video, I won't really be considering the orchestration, except that is for five or more horns that span the range of the typical big band. I could make a video about how Gil may have orchestrated this in a future video if you like. He did similar styled passages to this with a full band in his arrangements of Yardbird Sweet and Sorta Kinda. Let me know in the comments. In faster passages, it is nice to keep the horns higher and tighter where possible. This leads to a leaner sound, so most of the voicings are in closed position. The only exceptions are when the bass horn plays lower for dramatic effect or there is a large range between the melody and the bass horn. So let's make a start. The opening bar is actually quite a challenge. There is a run of quavers and only one chord to gather harmonic information from. So firstly I look for the target chord. This note of the phrase is important, so I'll try and make a clear C7 there. There's already a C in the melody, so I'll use an inversion, and I'll put a B flat there, the 7th. Now I'll try and create a swinging line in contrary motion that helps to outline G minor 7. I tried lots of options for this. Here's one of them, and another. But I've settled on this one. The C flat is just a chromatic step down, mirroring the melody. Stick around to hear the full eight bars at the end. Then I'll fill in the inner parts. I'll start with the target chord, completing that C7. And I'll keep this simple where possible, just choosing notes from G minor 9 on chord tones. Now I have a couple of repeated notes. I'll alter these ones so I can avoid this. Now I know there is a little disagreement out there about the repeated notes rule. For starters, it's not a hard and fast rule. Break it when necessary. Just be aware of the horn player's line and their ability to make it swing. For the first chord, I have just approached the next chord chromatically, although I altered the second part, as it makes the first chord a B minor 9, which is a nice accident. Notice at the start of bar 2 that I've used a drop 2 voicing. This is to avoid doubling the root. Now obviously I haven't worried about this rule for the first bar, but if I can make a small adjustment to make it work I will. And that's that phrase done. Bar 2 is simple. I'll write a C9 and a G minor 9. Chords 2 and 5 can often be interchanged when needed. Ok, let's look at the end of bar 3. The target chord should be a C7 flat 9. This passage contains a lot of diatonic notes and an arpeggio. For arpeggios I just tend to fill in the chord tones, in this case a G minor 9, and then write an independent bass line. For the last two beats, I use the chromatic descending line as I love the way it pulls into the C7. I also opted to flatten the C to avoid repeating the middle C again. It does make for a tangy or spicy chord, but we'll hear what that sounds like in a second. Actually, this method will sometimes leave you with all sorts of chords, such as this G minor over E, but that's the beauty of this method. One of the reasons I love this method of the bass line is that it provides so much movement and excitement in the music. If the bass line was a double of the melody, it wouldn't have as much forward drive. Ok, for these last four chords, we'll use descending dominant chords. E flat 7 sharp 11, with a flattened ninth to avoid breaking the rule. Then a D7, and a D flat 9 sharp 11. Check it out on this D7, I broke my own rule. Oh well, it's music. Think of them as guidelines. Bar 4 is similar to bar 2, except I put a G minor 9 in, and then the C9. Finally, a new chord, F major. So I came up with this bass line. It's diatonic, outlines the chord, and ends with the root note on the target chord. It's nice to have some leaps in the bass line at this point. A lot of the previous bars have had stepwise movement. In previous videos I talked about macro structure. I avoided the F in this octave as I am going to use it in two bars time on another target chord. D7 
this keeps the bass line fresh and exciting. I've kept all these chords diatonic, except for the E7 flat 5 flat 9 chord, where I added a G sharp. It prevents a dissonant chord and has nice voice leading for the player. Moving on, I've used a lower bass here with an open voicing for a sense of weight. I'm keeping it simple with an F6-9 and a B flat 9. In this phrase, I'll place the bass note in the target chord first. I notice this chromatic scale upwards in the melody. I'm going to mirror that again in the bass. And I'll add the B natural for the diminished chord. And that's the bass horn done. For the inner parts, I'll harmonize the target chord first then I'll fill in the melody by just approaching the target chord chromatically for each line, then the B diminished. That leaves just this chord to fill in. That's a slightly odd chord, E flat major 7 over A, but the voice leading is nice. OK, the last phrase. Now we have some more harmonic information. It can be easier to write a bass line when that is the case. First the target chords, the D here and an A here. And I'm going to interchange the 2 and 5 chords here at will, and place a C here and G's here. That's given me a nice shape. I'll join the target chords with a diatonic scale and place in the chromatic notes, one in counterpoint and the other in parallel. And we're done. Now I did these bass lines quickly, but I really take my time over them getting them right. They have to swing, outline the harmony and be interesting. If you do try this at home, then be picky with your melodies and bass lines. Now for the inner parts. The D7 flat 9. I'll use an F over A here. G minor 9s and a C9, maybe with a flat 9. The B flat can just be a diatonic chord, as can the C7. I've got options for the D flat, but I'll try this out. There is some nice chromatic movement there. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section. You can also buy the PDF score with full analysis if you just like to look at things in your own time. The link is in the description. These funds go towards the horn players. Here are the whole 8 bars played by a sax section. Mm -hmm. 